What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Desire to Inspire with Gilly B. And this is your host, yours truly, Gilly B. And on today's show, we're going to talk about forgiveness. But before we talk about forgiveness, we will have a Gilly B's funny moment. This one is reference to public restrooms. Oh, man, public restrooms. All right, so I want to make two funny points here. All right, so, and I'm not going to call it any particular uh you know, store name, but I'm just gonna talk about it in general. Whenever you go to a public restroom, first of all, before you get to the restroom, you can tell that the restroom is either smelling good or if the restroom is not smelling good. It may have a big stench to it, stench to it. So I was going to this particular place, I will not name again, um, and I was headed to the restroom and I was like, what is that smell? It almost sounded like, smell like sewage. I was like, what is that? I was like, okay, so I'm already prepping myself. Like, oh, I'm hoping this is not the bathroom because I really got to go. So when I get to the door, I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm like holding my breath, almost like you're doing double dutch, like you're trying to jump in. So I'm like, okay, one, all right, hold my breath. And then I go in, I'm like, okay, I went in, it was stank as I don't know what. Nobody was in there. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not good because if somebody walk in, they're gonna think it's me. So I went in the bathroom real quick and tried to use the bathroom, I'm like holding my breath. All right, then, so oh, I'm good, I'm good. Nobody coming in. And all of a sudden I go wash my hands and somebody walks in, I'm like, Oh my gosh. And we make out our contacts like, okay, hey, I'm saying to my eyes, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. And they're looking at me like, yo, you stink. You stink. So, so I'm like, okay, I'm washing my eyes out. Like, you know what? Let me hurry up. I got to get out of here because this dude thinking I'm, <laughs> I did this. So I walk out. Now, the thing about it is, I'm walking around the store and who do I see? The same person. I'm like, oh my gosh. So y'all know that moment when you be like, uh uh, you ain't about to you ain't about to point me out and say I don't want that did this. Uh uh. So I'm seeing him. He didn't see me. I saw him, and I was like, you know, it's almost like the popo behind you. Like you did something wrong. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm about to hide out. So I went high. I said, you know what? I could go and talk to him, but I said that would be kind of strange. So I was like, nah. I think I'll just go hide out and just kind of avoid him because I know I didn't do it. But you know how that is when you try to confess what is true. You know, people's like, nah, that was you. So that was the first point. The second point is. Now, this is real funny. Some of y'all going to act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all going to say I'm crazy. But when you go into the bathroom, it's really stank. And you're like, man, who is smell like that? And you see somebody in there and you see their shoes, right? So, you know, I'm like, okay, I see these red shoes. I'm like, okay, all right, dude. All right, so let me use the bathroom. I'm like, darn, this thing stink. So I'm going to wash my hands. I'm getting out of there. So I go outside. I'm like, you know what? Man, that was stink. Let me see what it is. Come out here. So I see somebody coming out. I was like, no, they're in the shoes. They're in the shoes. The next friends come out. I said, no, they're in the shoes. And I said, oh, yeah. They're in the shoes right now. <laughs> Boy, you stay. I was like, oh, no, dude, you stay. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm just like tripping out loud. People looking at me like, what is he laughing about? They don't even know because I was already in there. So, But, man, I just want to make y'all laugh this morning because <laughs> I was like, and I know I'm not the only one, so don't even act like that now. All right, so I just want to loosen up a little bit for y'all this morning. Well, we're going to talk about uh, forgiveness, all right? I have two poems here I want to read, and we're going to kind of uh, analyze this morning. All right, the first one that I'm going to read is called, You Don't Know My Pain. It's amazing how people think being me is so easy when they don't really know the half, that who I am actually makes me queasy. All inside with so many aches and pains and various thoughts going through my mind. So this is the life I live every day. But love, somewhere, is what I hope to find. Yes, somewhere, anywhere, somebody, anybody, is where and who I seek this love. But why, I ask God, can't I receive this love? And he said, because you are not looking above. To someone, he says, I know your father left you when you were just a baby, or maybe you never seen him. But remember, only I created and know all about you, and each of my creation is a sparkling gem. Regardless of who is and who is not in your life, all as well as what happened or is happening right now, whether it be physical, verbal, or sexual abuse, drugs, or even rebellion, but will the memories and thoughts of these things you continue to allow to ruin your life and keep you from living the abundant life which Jesus came to give, constantly batting in your mind like World War III back and forth, hoping to move past these issues and truly begin to live. But God, how can I do this? When I have been hurt so bad for so long, every day thinking I am living a life that pleases you, but unfortunately coming to realize I was all wrong 
because I had and still have unforgiveness, hatred, and bitterness in my heart. But the fact is, I know I need help. But where do I look? Well, God should be first to hear your honesty, prayers, and concerns, and then try reading and studying the B-I-B-L-E book. So finally, know that in order to move forward in a new light, you must experience true repentance from your sin, which means turning away from your sin and towards God. And then you have the V-I-C-T-R-R-Y in Christ, because in him, you win. So when I wrote this poem, and I can't remember when I wrote it, but when I wrote it, I was going through some things. Um, the issues of my past. And, you know, I know some of you right now that uh, as you listen to this poem, you can relate because you are or you may have gone through some of these same issues. Um, and it's amazing. Um, just looking back at the poem here, you know how um, some people think being you is easy because you keep a smile on your face. You go for it. You know, people think, oh, he got it all together. She got it all together when really there may be pain deep inside. Um, but what is you putting your best on the outside? So people think it's easy being you. But when they look back at your background and look at where you come from, if they were to look at that, they will realize that it's not so easy being who you are. But you choose to choose a smile. You choose to live a, a life that's pleasing God because you know where he brought you from. And. You know, just having the aches and the pains and just types of things going through your mind, like World War III, just mental gymnastics. You know, you can't make up your mind. You're indi indecisive about what you should do and what you need to do, how to live right. I don't I want to live right, but I'm not living right. And how do I change this so I can live right? So all these things are going through your mind. You know, a situation where your father maybe wasn't there, your mother wasn't there, or who have you. Some people said some things to you, done some things to you, and you just you just don't know really how to put that stuff away. But God is the only way that you can allow those things to be in the past and stay in the past. It's about giving your life to him. It's about coming to him and giving him everything that you have so that he can make you over, so that he can mold you in and shape you into who you really need to be. It's not those things of the past that define you. It's what God's word says that defines you. Uh, so I just wanted to share that with you because victory is in Christ. That's the only way you can be victorious. Otherwise, you're going to wake up every morning defeat it because you don't have him in your life so i just want to share that one with you and then the second one is called an altar of forgiveness oh how beautiful that special day was when i stood before the altar hands outstretched with eyes closed and wet confessing the ways of my falter from the things of the past to the things of the present giving an account for every single one with knees shaking and a broken heart, knowing the outpouring has just begun. As I seek to empty myself of all the wrong I had done, striving to live no more in sin and be more like God's only son. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is his name as he was born, lived and died, but rose up from the grave on the third day in a tomb. No longer did his body have to hide. So as I look back and remember this day when I stood at the altar of forgiveness, receiving Jesus Christ as my savior, now time to go out and be a witness. So when I wrote this, this was after the one said, you don't know my pain um, because I declared that Lord is my savior, that that I can go anymore, you know, hating people, hating the person who abused me or hating the person that said something bad about me. And, you know, I had, I had to get to a point where I had to forgive I had to forgive. And otherwise, I was living a better life because I didn't forgive. So I'm speaking to I know I'm speaking to some people now because um, I know I'm not the only one that has been through that. There's many people that go through that daily, you know, struggle with the, the, the idea of forgiving people because of one thing they might have done to you, several things they might have done to you, many things they may have done to you. But I'm telling you that if you you continue to harbor unforgiveness in your heart, you will, your life will not be joyous. Your life will be bitter because every time you think about that person, you're going to have ill feelings. Every time you think about that situation, you're going to have ill feelings and you're not going to be able to move forward in what God has for you to do. Um, so I just want to encourage you that forgiveness and we're going to, I'm going to share some scriptures with you and some, uh, some comments that some people made on my Facebook post in reference to forgiveness for this week. Um, but I encourage you just to seek forgiveness. And the only way you can do that is through God. No person can give you that. Only God can give you that will and want to forgive somebody for what has been done to you or what is being done to you. Um, so I want to share um, some comments that were uh, posted on my Facebook page. Um, Ms. D said, forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation. 
So just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that you actually have to continue in the same relationship that you have with them. Um, some people think that because if you forgive somebody, okay, now I got to keep on like nothing happened. All right, no, you forgiving somebody means internally your heart is being purified by God. Which means that, hey, I can still speak to that person, but I don't have to indulge in relationship as I once was with that person. Because you do for forgive, but as our minds, we don't forget. So um, also Mary Pickney said, forgiveness frees you. Forgiveness doesn't excuse what the violator has done. In order to be forgiven, we must forgive. All right, so forgiveness, it frees you. So if you're trying to be free and you haven't been freed, it's because you're probably still holding on to unforgiveness in your heart. So you have to forgive in order to be free, set free. Um, it doesn't excuse what the violator has done. Of course, what has been done in the past, it can't be changed. It can't be changed. So holding on to those feelings saying, you know, I wish I could have, would have, should have, but it, it can't change anything because the past is the past. That's history. It's already made. But that doesn't excuse what they've done. But on your part, that helps you to live a life saying that, you know what, through everything that I've been through, it's because of God that I'm able to stand right now. It's because of God I'm able to even say anything about what I've been through and, and call it a testimony because the, del the enemy didn't want me to make it out. But because God uh, has brought me out, I can testify to that. And the last one, she said, in order to be forgiven, we must forgive. Yes, we must forgive. I know that is a hard pill to swallow. Yes, it is. And it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Believe me, it doesn't happen overnight. So I encourage you to forgive. Um, and the last one, uh, Lesson Green said, forgiveness is for you to be set free, to be able to move forward in love and purpose. God wants us to move forward in love. He don't want us to be bitter. He doesn't want us to be angry towards one another. He wants us to show love because that's how he shows love to us through his word. Um, so I just want to share a couple of verses here um, real quick before we end. Um, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. That is Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Um, another verse is, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. That's Ephesians 4, 32. Um, another one is, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, which means repent, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's 2 Chronicles 7.14. Uh, you may be hearing that one a lot lately uh, with the coronavirus going on. You may have been hearing that. Um, and the last one, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. That's Mark 11, 25. So before we close, I want to pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for, for forgiveness in our hearts today, God. Thank you for uh, having us have forgiveness, God, and wanted to be forgiven for what we have done to others, and even so forgive others for what they have done to us, God. We thank you, Lord God, for leading us on the process of forgiving, God. We know that it's not easy, God, but we ask for your strength to help us, Lord God, to begin to forgive those who have hurt us so bad that we feel like, Lord God, we can't move on because of it, God. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. And it looks like we're out of time. Um, but as always, I want to thank you for tuning in and remind you that you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Y'all check me out on YouTube. Hit that like button and maybe even leave a comment. But most importantly, hit that subscribe button so others can be inspired and encouraged. And when you search, make sure you search D-S-I-R-E, the number 2 N-S-P-I-R-E and make sure it says with Gilly B because if it doesn't, that's not me. Hey, so tune in next Monday at 10, 1145 a.m. on WDRB Media Radio where we're the voice of the community and we have double information and inspiration. Thank you for tuning in again and have a great day.